Angus, Angus, wings of fire. Give me now what I desire. <laughs> <laughs> Five hundred years ago, you needed a wizard with a crystal ball to predict the future. Not anymore. Now you have machine learning. Here is the actual Euro GBP data from 2021 to 2024, and here are the price predictions for the same period by a machine learning model. Can you tell the difference? What if you had these price predictions back in 2021? What would your trading look like? Give me seven minutes of your time. And I will show you the power of machine learning in less than 100 lines of code and with just two indicators. I will not bore you with details. And then you can decide for yourself if machine learning is for you. So with no more shenanigans, let's begin. We begin in PyCharm and I will import these six libraries. First library is MetaTrader. This one is used to connect Python with MetaTrader to import historical values. Second one is Pandas. Pandas just stores the data in a two-dimensional array. Next library is Technical Analysis. This one is used to calculate indicators like RSI, moving averages, etc. Then we are using XGBoost which will be used to train the model and Pickle which will be used to store the trained model. And lastly we will use Matplot which is used to create graphs. Now let's define some variables. The first variable I'm defining here is the address of the MetaTrader terminal. The currency pair I'm using is Euro GBP. Next variable is count, which means that MetaTrader will read the last 30,000 candles from the most recent candle. Training percentage is 80%, which means that we will use 80% of the data to train the model and the remaining 20% to test it. Uh, I'm using this folder to save the final output file. Now let's begin with some of the fun stuff. We will connect to the MetaTrader platform. Now on my right hand side, I have the Python console. So I'm just copying the entire code and pasting here, pressing enter. And as you can see, it has returned true, which means that the connection to MetaTrader is successful. In the next step, I'm reading the historical values. Here I'm defining what to read, which means that I'm saying that read the currency pair that we defined here as Euro GBP. 16.388 is basically, I'm telling MetaTrader to read the 4 hour time frame. Let me show you here that for 4 hour time frame, the numerical value of that is 16.388. I'm just using that. Zero means that it will read the first candle that it reads is going to be the latest candle. And count tells us that go 30,000 candles starting from the latest candle. And that 30,000 we've defined here. Then once it has read the historical values and stored them in rates, we will convert it into a Pandas data frame, rename some of the columns and convert the date time into Pandas date time format. The two indicators that I will include are going to be EMA 20, 80 and 200 and RSI 14, 80 and 20. Now I will take all of this code and paste it in the terminal as well, just so you can see the effect of that on the data frame. As you can see here, I have this data frame, which has all the data from 2005 all the way till 2024. And not only do we have all the regular values like open, high, low, close volume, we have also included those six indicators, EMA 20, 80, 200 and RSI 14, 80 and 200. Next, I'm removing the first 200 rows because the first 200 rows contain NA and data. And I'm dropping open, high, low and volume columns because I only need the close column and the indicators that we've just created. So if we input these two rows of code here, our new data frame will just contain the date time, close and the six indicators. Now this data frame, which has close to 30,000 rows of data. I will split it into training data and test data based on that 80-20 ratio that I defined earlier. So let's also do that in the console. And now you can see that I have training data and test data separated. Training data starts from 2005 all the way till 2020, around 24,000 rows. And with test data, I have the remaining 20% data. 
So now we have split the entire data set into training and test data. Once we have split the data into training and test data, let's also define what is X and what is Y. By X, we mean all the inputs that we will give to the data model and the output that will be predicted by the machine learning model. So here you can see Y train is closed, which means that the closing price is what the model will eventually predict. And all the other columns will be columns that the data model will use to train itself. And I've dropped two columns from here, the date time and close. The reason that I'm dropping close is because it needs to be predicted. And the reason that I'm dropping date time is because it is not a numerical feature. Now, next I'm converting Panda to XGBoost internal matrix. This is just a mandatory step. Let me copy all the data until here and paste on the console as well. The parameters that I'm using are not that important at the moment. For now, you can just use the values that I've put here, learning rate of 0.05%, max depth of four. Let's not get into why we're using these values. We can cover all of that in a subsequent video. So let's take that and input that in the console. In the next step, I'm training the model and I'm saving the output in a file called in a variable called BSD. So again, let's take that. And now you will actually see the learning happening right here. As you can see, the model is learning itself. It will run for 500 rounds because that's what I have specified here, 500. And it's trying to reduce the mean error. Now the model has trained itself. The code to predict the price is to use our model to predict it. Let's also do that in the console. And now the prices that have been predicted by the model, we can add it to our original data set. So this was our original data set and I'm adding the predicted values to the data set. So let's see what it looks like. Now, if I look at the test data, you will actually see that there's a predicted close value that has been added to this uh, data frame. Now, let me save the model. So these two lines of code will save the model in the form of a pickle file. And then I am sorting the data by date and also saving it as a CSV file. So let's do that. Now, these two things should be saved in that folder that we specified earlier. So let's go there and check it. So I've opened Explorer and I will go into that particular folder that we had specified and we can see these two files output underscore CSV and XGBoost model. This is the model itself and this is the Excel file. Let's have a look at the Excel file as well. So the entire data frame is pasted in the form of a CSV. This is the original close, close price and this was the predicted close price by the model. Now the final remaining step is to print these two lines in the form of a graph. So this is the code for that. I will also paste that in the console and it will show us the graph that we had seen in the earlier model. Amazing, isn't it? I will not share my crystal ball with you but I will share machine learning techniques. In subsequent videos, we will go in a lot more detail and will use these predictions to fully automate the trading process. Stay tuned, a lot more is coming.